What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example dealing with financial modeling still. So as I mentioned in previous examples, as you can see a lot written out over here, you don't have to write all this out. It's in the PDF file at the beginning of the section. You could just print that out. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you could go to the description box and there's a URL to the course website where you can find this PDF. You don't have to write all this out. You can just print out those notes, fill them in. So what we're given here is a company's recent financial statements. So we got the income statement, we have the balance sheet. We're also told sales are gonna grow at 11%. So two questions here. Part A, using the percentage of sales method, we have to forecast next year's cost of goods sold, net income, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, long-term assets, and current liabilities. And then part B, if the payout ratio is 80%, we have to forecast next year's shareholder, uh, shareholders' equity and find the new external financing needed. New financing needed, external financing needed, both of those mean the same thing. Your prof may use one of those terminologies. So starting with uh, part A, I'm gonna erase this here just to give myself some room to work. So we're told that the sales are gonna grow at 11%. So that's the first thing we'll find is next year sales, the forecasted sales, because when we're using the percentage of sales method, we're gonna be using the forecasted sales to forecast all those other amounts that were listed. So the forecasted sales would be the current sales of 200,000 multiplied by one plus the growth rate, 11% in decimals. So that would be 0 0.11. And that would give you 222,000. So that's what the forecasted sales are gonna be. Another way you could have got that is you could have just found 11% of 200,000, 0.11 times 200,000, which would give you 22,000, and then you would just add that to here. So whichever way you do it, forecasted sales are 222,000. And so we're gonna be using that amount, I'll write it here, to forecast those other amounts. Now couple of ways we can do it. So the first item was we're forecasting the cost of goods sold. This is going to be next year's cost of goods sold. Because the cost of goods sold is going to stay in proportion to sales, we can actually just take it and grow it by 11%. That's one way. Another way, the percentage of sales method way, is you find what the percentage of sales the cost of goods sold is. The way you do that, you go to the recent income statement you would take the 130,000 and divide it by 200,000. That's gonna be the percentage of cost of goods sold to sales. And then you take that percentage and then you multiply it by the forecasted amount. So most textbooks are gonna show it this way that I'm showing you here. And so you would end up with 0.65 multiplied by 222,000. So cost of goods sold is 65% of sales. That's gonna stay constant. So 65% of the forecasted sales is gonna be 144,300. Right, so that's what the forecasted cost of goods sold is gonna be. So I'm gonna write that over here. Um, 144,300. Now the next item that they asked about was the uh, net income over here. So the net income is gonna be what? Well, we go to the current financial statement, 25,800 divided by the sales, 200,000, find out what percentage of sales is the net income, multiply it by the forecasted sales. Uh, you would have this would be what, 0.129, 12.9%, multiplied it by this, and you'd end up with 28,638. So that's what the forecast of net income would be. And again, a way to check your answer is you could just take the net income, multiply it by 1.11. You could take the cost of goods sold, multiply it by 1.11. You should get those 
respective amounts. Now, one thing I wanna mention in net income, you gotta be careful with these kinds of questions. I showed this in previous videos, in the lecture videos, but I'll mention it again. You gotta be careful with these questions in terms of what's in proportion to sales because a lot of times what will happen is a question will add a text saying the interest is staying constant, for example. That's a popular one. And we're gonna be doing examples where that happens. So if the interest stays constant, then we can't just find the forecast and net income this way. In this case, we can because there was nothing mentioned about interest staying constant or any other expenses staying constant on the income statement. So we assume that everything is growing at 11% in proportion to sales. But if you do get a question saying interest expense is constant, then you could only use that percentage of sales method up to the line before whatever item is being constant. So in this case, it'd be the earnings before interest and taxes. You could find this forecasted amount using this method, 45,000 divided by that, multiplied by the forecasting sales, but then the rest of the income statement you'd have to do manually. So you'd subtract that 2000 of interest that's staying the same, get the earnings before taxes, then apply that same tax rate, and then get the net income. So there's a little bit more work involved then. And again, we're gonna be doing more examples where that happens. I also showed that in the previous videos, in the lecture videos. Um, but yeah, just be careful. In this case, they didn't mention anything about interest staying constant. And so that forecast and net income were getting the same way as all the other amounts on the income statement. In this case, we were only getting the cost of goods sold. So the net income grows at 11% as well. Now, in terms of the balance sheet, basically they asked for all of those amounts. So they asked, except for long-term debt, long-term debt, unless stated otherwise, that you can always assume is staying constant. But all of these other items like cash, accounts receivable, inventory, long-term assets, current liabilities, those are all growing in proportion to sales. And so we would just apply that exact same thing. So for the cash, we would take the 50,000, multi um, not multiply, divide it by the sales, get that percentage which would be, let's actually put the percentages here. So 50,000 of 200,000 would be 25%. So that would be that first bracket in the calculation. Accounts receivable, 10,000 of 200,000 would be 5%. Inventory would be 4%. Long-term assets, 20,000 divided by 200,000 would be 10%. And then the current liabilities, 15,000 divided by 200,000 would give us 7.5%. Then we would convert these to decimals and then multiply it by that forecasted sales. And doing those calculations for those items here, so taking those percentages, converting them to decimals, multiplying it by the forecasted sales, we would get these forecasted amounts for the balance sheet items that we were asked for. All right, so these are the balance sheet items, and then these are the forecasted income statement items. Now in part B, they're saying if the payout ratio is 80%, what will be the forecasted shareholders' equity? Notice that we didn't forecast the shareholders' equity because we don't do that with percentage of sales because shareholders' equity depends on that payout ratio. Actually, it depends on the retention ratio, which directly depends on the payout ratio as well. So that we're gonna have to get manually in Part B. And then depending on what we get there, we'll have to find if there's any external financing or new financing that is needed. So what I'm gonna do, whenever I get questions like this, I always uh, create a forecasted balance sheet and we already have a lot of these items. So that's why I kept the balance sheet written out here. So I'm just gonna fill these in. And then filling in that left side of the balance sheet with these amounts here, these amounts, the forecasted amounts over here. And then when we total that left side up, we would end up with 97,680. So left side is done. Now the right side, current liabilities, that's gonna be the forecasted amount. That's changing in proportion to sales. So that's gonna be 
over here, we're going to have 16, 650. Now, with these kinds of questions, as I mentioned, the long-term debt stays constant. That's not changing unless it states that long-term debt is changing. Like it may state all the balance sheet items are changing in proportion to sales. But if something like that isn't mentioned, you assume long-term debt is staying constant. You may actually want to follow up with your prof and just double check that that's what they expect. But most profs, most textbooks are going to keep that long-term debt constant. But shareholders' equity, as I mentioned, we're going to have to calculate that manually. Right? It's not changing as a percentage of sales like we found these other items. What we're going to have to do with that is we're going to have to use that net income. Now, just in general, what is, how do we find forecasted shareholders' equity? Let's do a little review here of the general formula. Well, it's going to be the current or the beginning shareholders' equity. which was that 38,000. And then we add any addition to retain earnings. All right, that's what the formula is. And what is the addition to retain earnings gonna be? Well, we find that from the net income. So we, find, we take that forecasted net income so this is the net income or the earnings. And then we're told that 80% is being paid out. That's being paid out as a dividend. So what does that mean? That means that 20% is being retained in the company. So that's going to be the addition to retain earnings for this period that we're dealing with. So this amount, this addition to retain earnings is basically going to be 20% of that net income. And when you do that calculation, when you take 0.2, 20% multiplied by the net income, you'd end up with this value here, $5,727.60. So that's the amount that is retained. That's the addition to retain earnings. And then the payout amount is this over here, 0.8 times this, even though we don't need it. I wrote it out anyway. So this amount here is going to go here. So the current shareholders equity is 38,000. And how is it going to change? Well, with this retained amount of $5,727 and 60 cents. And so when you add these two, you'd end up getting $43,727.60. And so that's actually the answer to the forecast of shareholders' equity. That's part of the answer for Part B. So this amount would go over here. So we'd have 43727.60. That's the forecast of shareholders' equity. And now what we can do, we can add up everything on that right side. So when we do add everything up, we would end up getting $95,377.60 on that right side. So we're still not done the question because they're asking, they were asking what is the new or external financing that is needed. And notice that we will need external financing because that right side of the balance sheet is less than the left side of the balance sheet, right? These are not balancing. And more specifically, there's more forecasted total assets than forecasted total liabilities and equity or forecasted total financing. Remember that the whole right side of the balance sheet is pretty much financing. And so the external or new financing needed, it's always what? What's the formula? The forecasted assets 
minus the forecasted total liabilities and equity. So we got 95, 370, uh, 377.6, like that. And it's always in this order. It's always the assets minus the total liabilities and equity. You don't switch them up. And some questions, you may run into a scenario where this left side is going to be um, less than the right side. And so this value then would be negative, which means that you have an excess of financing or excess of cash. So sometimes this answer here could be negative as well. In this case, it's going to be positive, but just as a heads up, it can be negative too. And when you do this calculation here, we would end up with $2,302.40. And so that there is the external financing that this company needs in order to add to that right side of the balance sheet. So the right and left side balance out. Right, and that's pretty much it for the questions. So just be careful with these questions. And as I said, with that interest expense, when you're calculating that forecast and net income, in this case, we were able to just forecast it directly, but we're gonna do a question. Actually, it's gonna be the next question on the website where that net income isn't gonna change in proportion to sales because that interest is gonna stay constant. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit more of a manual calculation to get that amount right there. So just be careful with that. All right. And that's pretty much it for the question.